Hello squad, so continuation of map 101. Today we're gonna to talk about the difference between orienteering and land navigation. So in our orienteering video, we talked about some of the rules of thumb. Some of the rules of thumb is we're gonna select a route, we're gonna use a general cone of direction, we're gonna use time, speed, and distance to measure our distance, and we're gonna have checkpoints in place too. So some of the differences are uh, in land navigation, we're gonna dead reckon, we're gonna stay straight, we're not going to select a route. That being said, we're gonna follow an azimuth, a direct azimuth, a uh, specific uh, direction on our compass versus a general cone of direction. Like, so in orienteering, generally north by northeast, that kind of thing. Um, and instead of time, speed, and distance, we're gonna use a pace count. So time, speed, and distance, just real briefly, we should know the time it takes us to travel a kilometer through varying terrain. So for instance, most of us, just regular in shape or moderately fit people in a kilometer uh, with uh, no obstacles, no major terrain, it's depending on the person between 10 and 15 minutes, something like that. But you wanna check that time, speed, and distance measurement out in varying terrain, in varying varying types of uh, vegetation. With the pace count, we need to know how many steps it takes us to reach 100 meters, 100 meters. And it's usually easier to go on every other foot, one, two, three, four, etc. One of the keys, this is old school measuring, uh, that uh, guys used to use as ranger beads. So for every hundred meters that you that you walk, you slip down a bead on your suspension cord. So that way you keep track. That way you don't have to count to 200, 300. You just go back to 100. So, or back to one. One, two, 98, 99, 100. Another one comes down. Boom. One, two, etc. All right. Now, let's talk about uh, planning a route. So in orienteering, we're going to plan a route. Land navigation, we're going to dead reckon. We need to find an azimuth and we need to stay on that azimuth heading. That being said, we need a protractor. We need to use a protractor. <clears throat> My protractor, I threaded a piece of the gutted suspension cord through it to give me a precise measurement. Precise. And I want to use the inner ring here. So the inner ring has degrees on it. I'm not sure if that focus is good or not because I'm not wearing my glasses. <clears throat> so let us assume, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Boom, boom. All right, let me zoom in for you. So this map is just a chunk of earth somewhere in uh, South Carolina, the quadrangle is Steedman, wherever that is. I forget where it is or why I have this map. So let us assume that, glasses, that we need to travel from the north edge of Chuck Hill Mill Pond to that hilltop right there. All right, so I'm going to set my protractor center point on the northern tip of Chuck Hill Mill Pond, making sure that zero is at the top. So 320, 325, 330, 340, 345, 355 to zero. And I need to make sure that my northerly and easterly lines are lined up with the protractor, precisely, precisely. So it's about there. And then I need to, all I need to do is stretch my line. I'm looking back at the camera to see if, yep, we look, we look good. Stretch my line to the center of that hilltop, and what I read is 390 degrees. So 390 degrees is our heading. Oh, but wait, there's more. That 390 is our grid north. So. I'm sorry. That was 290. <laughs> 290. Did I say 390? 290, because there would be no 390. So, thank you, glasses. But anyway, 290 is our grid north, right? 290. 
290 degrees. What we have to do now is use our declination diagram, right? Because the difference between grid north and magnetic, there's a difference. There's a declination between the both. And we're traveling on magnetic north. It's a whole universal transverse Mercator grid system thing. Just, you could research it to, to figure out why, but man, that's a lot of dialogue for this. But we need to make sure that we go from our 290 grid north to magnetic north because we are going to be traveling on a compass with a compass. So we know that grid north is 290 degrees. The rule of thumb here with declination diagrams, Lars, left, add, right, subtract. Left, add, right, subtract. So I super, uh, superimposed the uh, declination diagram here so you could see it better. But the declination diagram is right there. And the difference between grid north and magnetic north is six degrees. And that's westerly or left. So I need to add that six degrees to my 290, which gives me, of course, 296. So that is my magnetic north heading. So on my compass here, I want to put that 290 right at the tip of that arrow, right there, 200, 296, 296, boom right there and then let me see see if I can bend this down oh yeah I can now I have to look to see it so now what I want to do send that red into the arrow and that's my heading so I'm gonna walk in that direction but how far how far am I gonna walk all right so back up here so now we have a heading now we have to figure out how far there's a couple different ways we can do this. We could use our declination diagram. Let's see, 360, because on it, it's got a 124,000 representation for meters, because we are using a 1 over 24,000 scale map, which means for every inch on the map, there are 24,000 inches on the ground. So I could just measure that out from here. Where's that hilltop? There's one kilometer. Boom, I've got the mark. So 1,800, 1,800 meters is the distance I am going. So real down and dirty, uh, difference between orienteering and land navigation. So thanks for listening and have a great day. Rock and roll, baby.